Hey everyone, I'm Chris from SSW, and today I'm going to talk about how to pick the right third-party libraries for your project. And specifically, I'm going to talk about NuGet and NPM libraries. So today, I'm going to show you a couple of criteria that you can check in order to reduce the chance of finding issues with libraries in the future. The first one is value. By value, what it means is that we want to install only the libraries that are very useful for us. For example, we want to find a library that provides us with a complex use case. For example, a component library that so we don't have to recreate, rewrite all the components from the beginning. So we don't want to have a duplicate use case library. So for example, if I already have a material Angular, then I don't want to install a ng0 library because they basically they are the same use case. And the second one is maintainability. We want to find a library that is well maintained. In the screen now, I have a NPM library called DateFNS. So the first thing that we want to look at is the number of weekly downloads. So as you can see, it has 11 million weekly downloads. So this gives us like a confidence boost that, okay, this is a widely used library. So it is more likely to be uh, maintained like far ahead in the future. The second one we can also check is the last published date is a month ago. So it's very recently updated. And if we go deeper to the um, repository itself, the, the date FNS repository open, and I'm looking at the insights tab, in, in this page, you can see there's a how many active pull requests the library have, how many active issues, and how many closed issues that it has. From this matrix, we have a confidence that, okay, this library is very well maintained, and it will, uh, for the foreseeable time in the future, it is going to still be maintained. The third one is compatibility. This is a very important thing to check because not all libraries support all versions of framework that you're using. For example, Angular Material version 14 only supports Angular 14. And the NuGet library Entity Framework Coral version 6 only supports .NET 6 and above. The next one is quality. So one thing I really like to check for a, uh, a particular library quality is from the code itself. So on my screen, I have the Angular Materials library open. This is the repository. And if I go to the specific file called changelog.md, one particular thing that I really, really love about changelogs is to check for breaking changes. If I just search for breaking changes here, in the future, when, when you're trying to upgrade every library, then this is going to help you a lot and going to save you time knowing that, OK, this specific things will break, this specific things will not break. next thing to check is licensing this is very important to check because if you don't abide by the license you might cause some trouble for your clients in the future so if you scroll down here to the license section you can see the license is mit so mit license is free to use you can download and use for free without any uh, commercial commercial impact or whatsoever high charts is you can freely download this from npm but if you scroll down there to the license section You'll see this is not MIT, but rather a, a link to a specific uh, license. So if I just go to this page and there you go, there's a lot of um, agreement that you have to agree with. The last thing that you want to check is bundle characteristic. If you use like a huge library, it means that it will, it will cause a slower download time on the client side and it's going to affect the performance of the page itself. I have the bundle phobia page open, and I'm currently looking at the library called Moment. If you install this library in project, it means it can cost extra one second of download time for your application in a 3G network or maybe 82 milliseconds on a 4G network. So this is just to give you an overview of what the impact of installing a library in your front end project. But before you want to install this library, it is highly recommend for you to get a second pair of eyes, get another developer to check the library and see if they agree with you. You want to track the reasoning of why you install this particular library instead of the other one. So then in the future, when you have to make a change to the library, then you have a uh, track record of 
why and you have you can make a better decision. So today I've shown you criteria to pick the well-maintained third-party libraries. And if you do have any tips or resources on how to pick a well-maintained library, please put them in the comments. I'm Chris from NSW and I'll see you in the next one.